I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell of your name to my kin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We welcome you today as we celebrate today St. Francis Xavier throughout the church, dying in the year of 1552, one of the first missionaries of the Jesuit order sent really right by Ignatius of Loyola. To me, the biggest thing about St. Francis Xavier is that he baptized 30,000 people and died at the age of 46. And I am just mystified by that. But he went to the Far East. But imagine baptizing 30,000 people in 46 years of life and he didn't start at your birth. It was at the age of 24, I believe, that he joined the order. But it's just um, amazing um, the work that we can do with God's help in bringing on the kingdom of God and, and helping convert people and bringing them to the faith. And uh, just before Mass, I learned that um, Ed's grandson, Walter, won a $10,000 prize in a contest yesterday at, uh, in New York City. Let's give him a round of applause. He's virtual. <laughs> All right. Incredible. Forged in fire that he won. It was a sword that he made, but he was chosen as the grand prize winner. So we congratulate him, and it's a, a chip off the old block, right? All right. Uh, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through the preaching of St. Francis Xavier won many peoples to yourself, grant that the hearts of the faithful may be born with the same zeal for the faith and that the Holy Church may everywhere rejoice in an abundance of offspring through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, they will sing this song in the land of Judah. A strong city we have. He sets up walls and ramparts to protect us. Open the gates to let in a nation that is just, one that keeps faith. A nation of firm purpose you keep in peace, in peace for its trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is an eternal rock. He humbles those in high places, and the lofty city he brings down. He tumbles it to the ground, levels it with the dust. It is trampled underfoot by the needy, by the footsteps of the poor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This gate is the Lord's. The just shall enter it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Please stand.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. But it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. And it collapsed and was completely ruined. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure all of us have heard the word, the words that I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, and um, and and they think that's it, and that's we've we've heard over and over again in in many religions, many Protestant religions, and Catholic teaching is a, is a harder act to follow. It's I accept Jesus as my, my God and Savior, but then also be willing to do his work and to be able to do his w- work in the world. I um, will see in death listings that people say that when someone passed away, they immediately had a, a, a rocket ship going to heaven in reality. And it's not at all what, what Jesus is teaching in the scriptures. In fact, we hear it today, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, where we accept Jesus as our Savior, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Meaning that all of us have work to do. Sometimes it's work we want to do. Sometimes it's work we don't want to do. But at the same time, that work is designed by our Lord for us to do that job, to be that loving parent, to be that forgiving spouse, to be that welcoming neighbor, to be that person who works hard in their job, to be the person that brings integrity to the world and honesty to the world. And if we anchor our life on our faith life and we say, in the Lord's name, I'll do it, you will find that you will meet people who can survive anything. They can survive the death of a spouse. They can survive the death of a child. They can you know, survive the death of a friend. They can undergo changes of location where they live. They can undergo a whole amount. And I think one of the one ones that I always think of are some of the natural disasters that have occurred to the Filipino islands. And I see them carrying statues of the Blessed Virgin Mary through waters that go up to their waist. But they really don't look afraid. Their main purpose is to make sure that statue is okay. And it doesn't go underwater. They don't care if they do. But as long as they anchor themselves onto their faith, That's what Advent is all about. That hope of that new beginning, it's a week of hope. It's also, and sometimes that first candle represents a faith. We want to anchor that faithfulness and be faithful to the teachings and know that it's not an automatic rocket ship, but we have work to do in the world. And we see it in the opening lines of today's scripture. Only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. So today, as we begin the day, we meet St. Francis Xavier as we open up, a man who was able to go off to Japan and China and faraway lands that he probably never envisioned, who was able to baptize 30,000 people and die at the age of 46. But he was able to do God's will. That's what Jesus calls every one of us to do. And that Japan or China may be just our next-door neighbor, or a person we don't want to call, or a friend that we end up falling away from, that we rejuvenate that relationship. But we welcome in Christ in our life, and when we do it in his name, 
That's how we prepare for the next world. So today our Advent wreath is getting a little bit more brighter as we add that tree in the back and begin to get ready to bless our ornaments over the weekend that people bring and do a parish Christmas tree. May we open up that light in our own world. And in your prayer life today, just ask, you know, Lord, what are you calling me to do? What's your will? May your will be done. Please rise now for the intercessions. With confidence and trust, we offer our prayers to our Father in heaven, knowing that the Lord is the eternal rock, will bring down the mighty and lift up the lowly. For all who hold leadership positions within the world, whether it be leadership in our family, leadership in our church, leadership in our country, leadership in our neighborhoods, May God strengthen them and guide them as they witness lives of faith and service doing God's will, not their own. We pray to the Lord. Glory to God. For our national and local leaders, may the Holy Spirit lead them to find peaceful solutions to conflict and division. We pray to the Lord. For those who are most vulnerable to the virus, We pray for our parasick list, all those in need of our prayers. We pray for all the first responders out there on the national TV that we see. May the Lord place them under his care and under his protection. And may he help us just receive that vaccination over the upcoming months and and, uh, obtain a herd immunity and go back to a better sense of community and movement in the world. We pray to the Lord. For our local community of St. John the 23rd, May the Lord look graciously upon the needs of the most vulnerable around us. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, we pray in a special way for our Mass intentions, Charlotte and Edward Lexner, and also Margaret M. Stanton. Today's my Aunt Peggy's anniversary of death. She died on my sister Patty's birthday, so I also pray for my sister Patty on her birthday. But for Charlotte and Edward Lexner and Margaret M. Stanton, our Mass intentions, may the Lord grant them eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. And for those prayers that we voice now in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust our prayers to you. In the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. Receive, O Lord, these offerings we bring in commemoration of St. Francis' Savior, and grant that as he journeyed to distant lands out of longing for the salvation of souls, so we too, bearing effective witness to the gospel, may with our brothers and sisters eagerly hasten towards you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the highest. Today we'll pray the Advent prayer of reconciliation number one. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave the two of them saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming. We offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep, keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints, in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In our own indirect way, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light, says the Lord. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. Let us pray. May your mysteries, O God, kindle in us that fire of charity, which St. Which Francis Xavier burned for the salvation of souls, so that walking ever more worthily in our vocation, we may obtain with him the reward you promise to those who labor well in your harvest, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I have a funeral tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning, so there will not be Eucharistic adoration from 9 to 12 tomorrow because a funeral will take place and it will supersede um, tomorrow's Eucharistic adoration. So again, tomorrow there will not be Eucharistic adoration. Those that have signed the sheet will call you to remind you, um, but if you could also make note of it for tomorrow, that normally we have it on our first Friday from 9 to 12. Tomorrow there's a funeral and it won't take place as a result. Our parish tree is getting ready, so if you can... Get an ornament or two ready. Um, over the weekend, we'll do a blessing of ornaments. If you're not going to be here over the weekend and just participating remotely, um, you can bring it into our office or bring it to church during the week. But let's uh, decorate that tree. It certainly looks glorious on our altar. And um, I'm grateful for Arlene and, and, um, and Barbara who are helping coordinate that and fluffing it up to make it look very beautiful for all of us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.